Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number 10 from the May June 2020 IGCSE Cambridge paper 4 variant 2. And this question here is about differentiation. Um, uh, 10 part A part 1. You got y equals x to the power 4 minus 4x cubed. Find the value of y when x equals negative 1. Well, the first part is simply replacing the x with negative 1 in this equation. So you have uh, 4 times, well, minus 1 to the power 4, minus 4 times minus 1 cubed. Now, anything raised to a positive power, a negative number raised to a positive power would be positive, so that's going to become 1. Minus 1 to the power 4 is 1. And any, uh, any negative number raised to a uh, odd power is going to, because stay negative, so it'll be minus 4 times minus 1. Minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. So that gives you 1. Now minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4, so that gives you 5. So that's the value of y when x equals negative 1. Then it says for part 2, find the two stationary points of this graph. Now, the stationary points of a graph are the points of 0 gradient, where the gradient of the graph is 0, the turning points. Okay, so the stationary points of this graph can be found when the gradient is equal to zero. Now the gradient is given by dy dx. That gives us the gradient function. And to 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 find dy dx, you have to differentiate um, the equation with respect to x. So if you differentiate x to the power of four with respect to x, what we do is we multiply by the power. So it's going to be four times this one, which is there, which is four. And then you take 1 from the power. So it's 4x to the power of 3. Subtract 1 from the power. Similarly, here you have 3 times minus 4, which is negative 12. And you subtract 1 from the power, so it becomes to the power of 2. And you've got to basically equate that to 0 to find the stationary points. We know that at the stationary points, at the stationary points, okay, what we know is dy dx is equal to 0. So you have 4x cubed minus 12x squared is equal to 0. So what we can do to solve this equation, we can divide by 4 first. Um, we don't do divide by x because that will cause us to lose some solutions. So if you divide by 4, you end up with x cubed minus 3x squared equals 0. Take out the common factor, which is x squared. We're left with x minus 3 equals 0. So we have x equals 0 twice and x equals 3. Okay, so one of the uh, the x coordinates of one of the stationary points is x equals 0 and the other one is x equals 3. Okay, this actually is a special type of um, stationary point which we can discuss later on. Um, it's a called a repeated root. Okay, where that means basically um, this curve will turn on the the x-axis at that point. It will, it will actually turn on the, the stationary point will be on the x-axis at that point. Okay, so that's something we can go into later. Not, not really necessary for us to go into right now, but the, there we have, let me just make a bit of space here. So there we have the answers um, to the x values, but it says find the stationary points, meaning the coordinates of the stationary points, and we can see that that's what they intend. In the answer space, they've got place for the x and the y value. So when x is 0 and you have x equals 3, we've got to find the y coordinates. So let's go back to this. So when x equals 0, we can see, see that y is also equal to 0. You have 0 to the power of 4 minus 4 times 0 to the power of 3. So that's the origin. That's where it's going to turn on the, on the origin. Um, as I just mentioned as well, uh, it's going to turn on the x-axis at that point. And when x equals 3... You have y equals 3 to the power of 4 minus 4 times 3 to the power of 3, which is going to be 3 to the power of 4 is um, 81 minus 4 times 27. Okay, because 3 cubed is 27. So that's going to be 81 minus, and that's um, 80 plus 28, 108. So 80 minus 108 is negative, And you're going to have, uh, that's going to be how much? That's going to be 27, minus 27. 108 and 81, if you subtract them, you get 70 at 27. Okay, so we could just confirm that. 
in our calculator, 3 to the power 4, take away um, 4 times 3 cubed, 4 times 3 to the power of 3. And that gives you negative 27. So when x is 3, y is negative 27. So there we have the two stationary points of the graph. Y equals x to the power 4 minus 4x cubed. Now for part b, it says x equals, uh, sorry, y equals x to the power of p plus 2x to the power of q. And it says dy dx is 11x to the power of 10 plus 10x to the power of 4 where dy dx is the derived function, find the value of p and the value of q. So we've got to think backwards here. Okay, we know that dy dx is 11x to the power of 10 plus 10x to the power of 4. That's dy dx. We've got to think about how to get to y. How to get to y. Okay, so what we're going to do here is the following. Think about what this would have been, okay, if you're doing the reverse, okay? If we're doing the reverse, we would have had to take 1 from this power. When we, when we go from, from, the, from y to dy dx, the first thing we do is we multiply by the power, and then we take 1 from the power, right? So that means this must have been to the power of 11 before you differentiate it, because you've taken 1 from the power, right? And this must have been x to the power of 5 before you differentiated because you had to take 1 from the power for us to go from there to there. When you, when you, do, when you finally do y dx, you take 1 from the power. So this one, okay, this must have been x to the power of 11 first. All right? And before you differentiate, you know, um, or when you differentiate, you multiply the coefficient by whatever the power is. So if you ended up with 11, this must have been 11 times 1. So this must be x to the power of 11. When you differentiate, that gives you 11x to the power of 10. So that's how it should have been before. And here, before you started, this should have been x to the power of 5. Okay, so that 5 was multiplied with whatever's here to give you 10. So that must be a, a 2 there. Okay, that's a 2 there. Because that will give you, if you differentiate that, that's going to give you 10x to the power of 4. Multiply by the power and take one from the power. So... We know that um, it's going to be like this, all right? This is how it was before it was differentiated, okay? So we can see that the value of P, all right, is 11, and the value of Q is 5. We can see that from here, okay? In fact, they, they actually gave us it in this form. They gave us, so we could, we could do the, in fact, we can do it a different way. That, the way I've done it can be done even if they didn't tell us what it was like before, okay? They didn't tell us, if they didn't tell us it was like this before, with this one and this two there, we could have found the answer still, right? And there's something else, by the way, here, which you'll learn later on, is that, you know, there's, could have also be, say, a, a number, some constant, which we don't know what it is. When you differentiate, it becomes zero. So that, that's, that's something com coming later when you do AS maths, no problem for that. But the other way of doing this, um, y equals x to the power of p plus 2x to the power of q. Now, if you think about finding dy dx, dy dx is px to the power of p minus 5 plus 2qx to the power of q minus 5 minus 1, sorry, plus 2qx to the power of q minus 1. Multiply by the power take one from the power. Multiply by the power, take one from the power. So if we come, that, that's what dy dx is. So if we compare it to what they've given us, dy dx is equal to 11x to the power of 10 plus 10x to the power of 4. So we could see here that p is 11 and we can say that 2q is 10. So we could say p is equal to 11. We could say 2q is the same as 10. 2q is the same as 10. Okay, so that means Q is equal to 5. Okay, so we, Q is equal to 5. So we got the answer in, in this way. That's probably the way they intend you to do this question because they gave you it in this form. We could even say that P minus 1 is 10. So P is equal to um, 10 plus 1, which is 11. Q minus 1 is 4. 
So Q must be 5. You can find it that way also by looking at the powers and comparing the powers. Okay, in any case, you get 11 and you get 5. I've also shown you how to do it. Imagine they didn't give us this. There was a question they didn't give us this. And they wanted us to find what the value of um, P and Q is, you know, what the powers are basically. Okay, if they just told us that the powers are P and Q. All right, then we can do it this way as well. So there's two different ways of doing it. This is probably the easier way of doing it because they gave you this form. You know there's a two there, you know there's a one there. So, you know, you can just do it that way, no problem. So there's the answer to this question. All right, P is equal to 11 and Q is equal to 5. Okay, so that's the answer for this question from May, June 2020. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that would appear over here. Other questions from differentiation can be found in the playlist that will appear in this area over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.